Okay, so let's set up our firewall rules to make sure our server is secure and to make sure that incoming traffic is only the type of traffic that we want to come into our server. I've made a bunch of videos on these, so I'll link up to some more in-depth tutorials I have. But basically what we're going to do is check out and use the IP tables command. So we can say IP tables L to list out our firewall rules and our firewall chains, which I'll explain, and V for some verbosity. And we see three chains here, input, forward, and output. So the input chain is what we care about. That is the rules that are affecting incoming traffic to the server. Forward rules can forward traffic from my source to a destination. And the output chain affects network traffic originating from the server and going out somewhere else. Like I said, we only care about, in our case, the input chain because we care about traffic from outside of the server coming in. That's the most important uh, place to protect our server. So there are absolutely no rules in the input forward output chain, which means this server is basically open to the world for the world to try to connect into the server. So we're going to add a few rules here, and some are boilerplate. We'll start with those. The first one is this. So here's what the command does. sudo IP tables. The IP tables is the command that affects firewall rules. Dash A to add a rule. We're going to add a rule to the input chain. We're going to say anything coming on the loopback interface, so dash I is the network interface, LO is the loopback interface, which means the local host network interface, and we're going to accept any traffic into it. And this is a boilerplate one, which just helps us stop blocking traffic that's just um, going into the loopback interface from stuff on the server. Without this, some stuff might not work when they try to use the local host network. So this isn't really even securing out external traffic, but it is just making sure that internal traffic continues to function. Our next bit of boilerplate is something that is a little special. This is dash M. So the dash M flag is for a module and the module we're using is connection tracker. And we're gonna track any um, related and established traffic. So this is traffic that's already connected to the server, such as our SSH session that we're using right now. And we're gonna say to accept that because what this lets us do is to block um, traffic and if we accidentally block port 22 our ssh traffic then i'll get cut off from the server so this is just going to say even if i mess up the next following rules this is going to allow our currently established and related traffic so i won't cut myself off from this ssh session okay now the fun one so we're going to uh, accept ssh traffic which is on port 22 over the tcp protocol so we're going to add to the input chain the protocol is tcp so we're not doing the by network interface here, we're doing by protocol, TCP protocol, the destination port is port 22. So that's the port 22 in the server because we're using port 22, which is the standard port for SSH. And we're gonna accept that traffic. The J dash J is to say to jump to uh, the accept policy. Okay, so port 22 traffic is allowed. So if we do sudo IP tables dash L capital L V, we'll see our input chain has some stuff here. So uh, the loopback rule we made, and then the connection module traffic that, is, that continues to allow us to use any related or established connection is currently made to the server. We're gonna allow SSH over port 22. This would normally say port 22, except the server knows that port 22 is SSH, so it's actually labeled it uh, an SSH port here. And then we can add web traffic. So we can say anything in port 80 will also be accepted. So it lists out the rules again, here we see HTTP is allowed traffic, and once again, it knows port 80 is HTTP traffic by convention, so it's labeled it HTTP instead of saying port 80. If I did some random port, then our rules would say, you know, port 8323, because that's not a, a port that's related to any specific thing like HTTP and SSH is. Okay, so we actually have not told IP tables to not accept any traffic yet. The way IP tables is going to work is that the first rule that matches some sort of traffic pattern is going to be the one that um, affects that traffic. So if I log in over SSH, it's going to see this rule. This rule is not related to SSH, so skip it. This rule is not related to SSH, skip it. This rule is for TCP traffic on the SSH port, port 22. That means this rule will be used for that traffic and it says to accept it, so it'll be accepted. But what that means is that we need at the very end of this chain a rule to drop traffic. And that rule is going to be the same as before. It's just going to be drop anything uh, that reaches that point. So we don't need to say on port on TCP or any network interface or at any port. We just say drop the remaining traffic. So what that means is that any traffic that's not the loopback network interface, that's not the currently related sessions, which is just my um, SSH connection to the server currently, anything that's not SSH, anything that's not HTTP, anything that's not port 8323 gets dropped. That means everything else gets dropped from the server. It's not accepted traffic. 
And you can do a lot of other things with IP tables. All I've done, for instance, is run commands that let you append or add rules to the input chain. You can also uh, insert yourself into the input chain at position five, for example. Position five, I think, is what will work for here. And here I'm going to accept HTTPS traffic on port 443. And then if we do sudo IP tables slash LV, we'll see that port 443 traffic has been inputted into the one, two, three, four, fifth position in the chain, which is what that five was here. And one of the last things I want to do here is just clean up this rule to get rid of this uh, rule that is going to allow this random traffic in port 8323. So sudo IP tables dash D to drop a rule. And we're going to drop the rule at input line. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're going to get rid of the sixth rule in that chain. I'll list out the rules to make sure it's actually gone. And it is. Perfect. Okay. Let's do some quick stuff. Um, by default, if we reboot the server, those firewall rules will not persist. So we need to make sure they actually survive when we reboot the server. So we'll do sudo apt get install dash y ip tables persistent. And for here, yes, do I want to save current IPv4 rules? I do. Do I want to save current IPv6 rules? I don't have any, but we'll save them anyway. And then we'll see in the etc ip tables directory, we'll have some rules. And we can check out the rules.v4 file. And we have a bunch of rules there. And this file and in conjunction with the IP tables persistent service will persist these rules through reboot so they get reapplied when the server reboots. Now if you ever want to look at those rules or if you ever want to generate that file you can use this command which outputs that stuff we just saw in that file and then we could save it. So I'm going to pipe it to t and I'm going to use sudo so I have permission to write to this file. We're going to send that content to the Etsy IP tables rules.v4 file. So this will save this current rule set into the IP tables rule.v4 file. And then we can restart the service. So we can do sudo service IP tables restart if we need to. And that should restart the IT tables persistent service that will load in those files. And in fact, I called it IP tables persistent, but I think it's now called netfilters persistent. So sudo apt get install dash y net filter persistent is also the package you can use and probably should use instead of IP tables persistent. But this server has an alias for that, which is why that command worked. Okay, that's it. We've done a few things to set up our server. We have added a new user. We've made sure that user can log in over SSH. We've secured SSH itself so that uh, users require an SSH key to log in. The root user cannot log in over SSH. We installed fail to ban so that our audit, our auth log, is being monitored. And even now we can see that a bunch of other IP addresses have attempted to connect to the server, right? So it's really good that we have fail to band enabled. And then finally we set our firewall rules using the IP tables command so that we only allow an SSH web traffic and secure web traffic and drop all other traffic. So other stuff attempting to connect to our server will fail. And these are the basic and most important and really 99% of what you need to know for securing your server, especially when you first uh, boot up a server for the first time.